Today I'm going to show you how to catch a carp, turn it into leather, and then into a piece of your hat. Turning a fish skin into leather and then into a piece of something for your hat is quite a process. Now the best place to start of course is down by the creek and I'm using a spinner to start with and then I swap over to some corn at another spot and I do much better so let's go down and do a bit of fishing. It's pulling like a carp. Oh, it's a reasonable sized fish. He's just... Whoa, he's a good fish. I think he might be wrapped around the weed a little bit. There's not a lot of freedom in the movement there. Try him from another angle. I'll just let him have a line for a little bit and see if he pulls himself free from that snag that's there. Oh, here we are. Actually, not too stuck. Just gently pulling through that weed there. Now here we go. He's coming with a, <laughs> a whole heap of duckweed. He's in there. Yep. Let's come up here and have a closer look down the water's edge. Alright, what have we got? European carp. This is what we thought. And he's No, I'll bring him away from the bank a bit. <laughs> okay. Didn't really hook him that well. Well, it's not in his mouth, that is. It's just sort of hooked the side. Doesn't matter. Got him up. Okay. So. I don't know, might be about three pound at the most, one and a half kilos, and uh, they're a type of catfish actually. See the whiskers on them there, and they stink, but they make a good skin. So we'll knock him on the head, scale him, and skin him. And we'll see how good a skinny makes. <laughs> but you just give them a knock on the top of the head and uh, they don't feel a thing, so it's about there. And that's done. Carp are an introduced species to the Australian waterways. They frequently reach plague proportions and do a lot of damage wherever they go. It's actually illegal to throw them back into the water alive, so I have no problem hitting them on the head to put them down. Now, carp 
have very big scales. That's a telltale that somebody's caught a carp on the bank and they've scaled it and decided to eat it for some reason. So I've tried carp once and they taste exactly the same as the mud that they're swimming over the top of. So consequently I'm never going to try them again. But I have made a skin <coughs> out of them before and it works very well. That's probably, in my opinion, their best use. Right, it's pretty much done. I think that's all good. There. Now get the knife. Just use a fishing filleting knife for this bit. They just got to cut along. It's the same as um, filleting a fish. Cut along the top there. But you don't have to go as deep because you're not going to get the flesh off. They just go under the skin. Like that. Right down to the tail. Make it as long as you can. Now you just got to get it separated from the flesh. And use your thumb to get it out and get it off comes off relatively easily because carp is such a slimy animal if you haven't nicked the skin at all it's pretty hard to tear it so you're pretty safe you don't have to be too delicate Just work it off with your thumbnail or scrape it a bit with your knife. Just be careful not to cut the knife that way on it. You've got to sort of that way with it. Like that. Once you go back to the skin, then you can work it again with your thumb and get it off. Alright, nearly done. And you just do it one side at a time. You could, I guess, do the whole thing right the way around, but um, I find it easy to just do one side at a time and then you've got two pieces per, per fish. So that's one side done. I'll probably get the rest of that flesh off with the fleshing knife when I get back home and um, put the first salt on, the first layer of salt. Okay, I'll do the other side and then we'll go straight to the salting. Well, I'm back home and I'm back in the shed and I've actually caught two carp today. So I have four pieces of skin to work with, uh, two halves off each fish. So first of all, we've got to get the flesh, the excess, excess flesh that I couldn't get off when I was skinning it. And we're going to scrape that off now. And I'm not going to use a flesh knife, it's probably going to be a bit sharp. So I need a blunt knife. If I'm going to use a kitchen knife, a bread and butter knife, I think it'll be just the right thing for the job. So you kind of just, just gently scrape it off. It's not very hard, but you do have to get it off. Otherwise, it's not going to let the salt into the skin and do its job properly. You'll end up with patches of the skin that aren't actually tanned. Now, for any leftover little bits of flesh on there that you can't scrape off with the knife, that's all right. You'll be able to actually sand those off with a piece of uh, emery paper or sand, sandpaper when the job's done.
Righto, it's pretty good now. I'll just give it a wash in some salty water and then we'll put it in the salt. Get your excess water off there, just, just sort of wring it off. Like that. Okay, now you don't need to salt both sides. You just need to salt the uh, flesh side of the skin, just like you would do a sheep skin or any other skin. And then we'll roll it up. Uh, not too thick. Just enough so you could s every part of it gets a bit of salt on it. That's what you're chasing. And once you can feel salt over the whole surface of the skin, which I can now, just roll it up from the tail end first. And we can leave that wrapped up in just a little bit of fabric like that. And that'll just keep it for a day. And tomorrow we'll do the second salting. Just at the sheds and I've got to find a board to pin the skins onto and stretch them out on and then I can put the lube on and once they're dry we'll then unnail them off the board and uh, that'll be finished. So let's go to the shed here and have a look. Here we go. Right, that'll do the job because the skins aren't wider than that. Nails and a little hammer. So we just need some little craft nails like that, and a little hammer, and we'll be set. There's our skins there. Well and truly tanned. They've been in the solution for <laughs> probably about a week now. But that's okay, you, you can overdo it in the solution, as in they can be in there longer than you'd want them to be. It doesn't wreck them. But uh, you don't want to underdo it. You want to make sure they're completely gone blue. Like that. So, right. Just sort of give them a bit of a squeeze. Pin them out. You pin them out. The flesh side down. You leave these, the scale side up. Because... You need the lube to get on that. Each one of those little frilly bits has got to have lube touching it, otherwise they go hard. Right, it's a good length of wood. Okay, I'll just pin them out and I'll get the lube on. Actually, I'll... Now, I haven't actually done this before putting lube on both sides but I'm suspicious that it will help a little bit more if I can get the lube on the underside and that side make sure that it gets soft everywhere so I'll do that first now you can tan a skin without adding the lube I talk about it in my other video on how to uh, tan a I think I tanned a sheep skin so I'll, I'll, I'll Save you the detail of that, just click on that video, I'll put it on the link below or whatever. Um, but, so this is already a tanned skin, but if I don't put this lube on, 
which is an oil-based sort of a softener, it will go a little bit hard. It won't be nice and soft leather that uh, you'd like to wear on your body or make a bracelet out of or whatever. So you've got to get that lube and every one of those little pieces will go sort of crusty. If you get the lube on all of them, it won't. So I'll do that now, I'll just put the lube on and um, take care of the skin a bit better. You don't need heaps, you just got to have enough that the lube touches all the parts of it. As it dries, the skin will uh, naturally pull the lube into all the places where the water was and it will replace the water and maintain its softness. So even though that's a bit sort of wet at the moment, that's okay. That'll dry out. And I'll actually, I'll put it on the other side too, make sure the whole skin's taken care of. This will be too much lube and that's okay as well because it'll wash out and what doesn't bind to the leather will come out in the water and uh, you'll be left with a nice soft dry to touch skin. There we go. Now I'll just stretch it out. I'll do those other ones in a minute. So this is important because it shapes, it shapes the skin. And you do it as close to the edge as you can with the nails. Just like that. Listen to the waters humming, see us drinking through the sky, like the bird is flying home. So everywhere the skin comes up to a bit of a point is where you want to place the nail. So every, every spot where it changes shape, that's where you put your nails. Over plains and high top mountains, over rivers deep and wide, like a mighty galley for you, is that airmail special? Alright, that's pretty good. That'll take about two days in this weather, it's windy and warm now and that'll dry out and I'll take it off and give it a wash and it'll be finished. So I'll go ahead and do the rest of these skins um, and then we'll have them done. All right. Okay, well that's the first skin taken off the board. And as you can see, it's quite thin. You can see through it, the light shines through it. It's a bit opaque. And it is in bad need of a wash because the, the lube is completely uh, saturated, this skin, and it needs to be, uh, the excess needs to be washed out now. So I'll do that and hang it up to dry and then I'll see if I can turn it into something. Going back, going back to the Blue Ridge Mountain. To the Blue Ridge Mountain. Going back, going back. Gonna leave today. Gonna leave today. Going back, going back to the Blue Ridge Mountain. To the Blue Ridge Mountain. Honey Bay. Honey Bay, Bay. I'm going away. Okay, it's been a few hours and it's been a nice windy, dry sort of a day and these skins have dried out perfectly. I'm really happy with the final product. That is the end product there as far as turning it into fish leather goes. So now I'm going to make it into something and hopefully it works out. I've never done any leather sort of work before so I'm just going to try something simple. I'm going to actually make a band for this hat. So stick it up there and wrap it around and from now on you'll see me with a bit of fish skin leather on the hat. Part of the image. 
Well, first of all, I've got to get the hat off. And you're not really supposed to take your hat off when you have this sort of an image, so I've just got a spare hat here and I'll, excuse me while I go off camera and get changed. This is my old hat, as you can tell. And here's the other one, the good one. So we'll put the leather on this and um, see what it looks like. So I'll cut it up to shape. Okay, I reckon if I cut it through here, cut the tail off and cut it about there, that's about right for this section to go on the hat through the band there. So let's cut that. Pretty thin leather, easy to cut through, but strong once it's if it's intact. It's, I'm really proud of it. Impressed by the strength of it. It's amazing stuff. So let's wrap this around here. That's pretty good. All right. Well, if it comes off, I'll. I'll put a couple of stitches in it, but that's not too bad. What do you reckon? Well, that's it for today's episode, folks. I hope you enjoyed seeing a feral animal being turned into a piece of decoration for the top of my hat. Now, if you enjoyed it, please click like and subscribe if you want to be alerted to more videos. And I'll catch you next time. Honey bang, honey bang, I'm going away.